am Matthew Miller. I am the Fedora project leader, and this is a Fedora Council video meeting. So in the Fedora Council, which is kind of the top level leadership and governance body for the Fedora project, we try to do our business as much as possible without actually requiring meetings. Uh, at first, we had no meetings at all, but it very quickly turned out that you actually need to have a cadence of meetings to get work done. So we have regular meetings. Mostly those are text-based meetings in IRC or Matrix now. Uh, but we also, every month or so, do a video meeting where we uh, have a high bandwidth conversation about something exciting or important or hopefully not in trouble, but occasionally that in the project and kind of uh, make something that we can have, have this real-time conversation and also show things off and we record it. So if you're watching this later, uh, that's there, so uh, you can see what's going on. And uh, this week we are having a presentation from the websites and apps team about uh, that project and particularly about the new website design for Fedora, which I am really excited about because it's been a long time, um, I don't know, 10, 10 years since we had a major website redesign, and this is going to be something uh, more than just a refresh of Git Fedora, the whole everything, fedoraproject.org and everything has been rethought, and um, I am pretty excited for it. So uh, we have a number of people from that team here to uh, present, uh, starting with Ashlyn, who will, uh, I think, go through the new design and talk about things, and then uh, some other folks will cover mm -hmm. other parts, and I guess I'll hand it over to you and let you introduce yourselves and uh, go for it. Sounds good. So I'm Ashlyn Knox. I'm uh, one of the contributors to the websites and apps team. <clears throat> and I just wanted to start by grounding with some of our uh, top level goals and an overview of what we've been working on. Uh, so one of the big focuses for this revamp is to make a new website infrastructure that's really easy for other team members or team members from other teams to be able to contribute to, such as editing uh, site, uh, content on their additions pages or uh, changing out images, things like that, without necessarily having to have uh, web and apps tech stack knowledge. So for that, we've been working on setting up a CMS that'll be pretty lightweight, it's pretty easy to access, and it allows just simple changing of uh, basic page content. And then for more for more um, complex changes, uh, things to like the actual layout and whatnot, a little bit of uh, knowledge of our, our tech stack would be necessary. Um, but yeah, we think that this is a really good way to move forward to keep our sites a little bit more modular and uh, to keep it so that we can update our sites regularly and easily without it having to put too much stress on any particular team. Um, along with that, we're also uh, changing out our tech stack for Nuxt 3 and Vue, which is a JavaScript front-end framework that does static site generation, on the Nuxt side at least. Uh, and we went with this because Vue is a pretty easy to get used to uh, framework as far as those things go. And um, the, a lot of the syntax, if you're used to regular HTML and JavaScript, isn't too separate. There's some specialized knowledge, but there's pretty good documentation for it to make it fairly easy to onboard. We did some early uh, training sessions with members of the design team, with whom we've been collaborating with very closely to uh, work on work on this, work on getting the, the prototypes and the designs to implementation to happen uh, smoothly and um, just to get it so that we can uh, work on each other's stuff a little bit. We're able, the website's members are able to provide feedback and talk about the, the mock-ups and everything as we're working on them. And likewise, the designers who wish to uh, get into a bit of coding, they're able to also start getting involved uh, with that. And so we made some training videos and such. Um, so right now we're, we're on track for being able to launch for the F38 release. So that'll be all the main edition pages and their sub pages. Uh, this will be the first draft of our new navigation system. That's pretty exciting. Uh, we've been working on building a nav that will, uh, have a version that lives on the domain that we've been working on, but will also have an exportable version that we'd be able to put onto the other sites or other sites throughout Fedora. So this is, as, uh, I believe Nico's got this up on the screen here. This is a bit of what I'm talking about. 
Um, and uh, Nico's going to do a more in-depth walkthrough of this mm -hmm. design and, and of our uh, current state of our deployment in a little bit. Uh, but some of the other exciting things that we're looking at long term is uh, at the F-38. Sorry, to uh, the F-38, that's uh, basically end of April, May time frame. We're planning on that. Oh, yeah. Would, would be would, would be proposed. Yeah, if, if there's no blockers. OK, just uh, that sounds great. I just uh, not mm -hmm. everybody knows the schedule as well as we do. So I wanted to put the actual yeah. month on it. Um, and then also, is this going to, at that point, be uh, kind of replacing parts of Git Fedora or all of Git Fedora, or will that also be FedoraProject.org domain name change at that point? Uh, this will be for FedoraProject.org, and uh, we should have Git Fedora changed by this point as well. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, sorry mm -hmm. for getting ahead of things. Oh, no worries. Ashlyn. No worries. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Ashlyn, let me know what you need to see on the screen, right? Uh, I'm in the HackMD right now. Oh, okay. If you, you could just leave it on the uh, the website uh, landing yeah. page there, that that'd be fine for right now. I'm just going to wrap up this a uh, cool. little bit here. Um, some of our long term plans for the the next steps of this following our our launch with uh, around springtime is going to be to build a, a components library that will build based on what we've done with this site. So that would that would allow people to be able to build other sites using the same stack and the same uh, component libraries that we've been using to build this, which is all uh, ran, managed, and maintained by Fedorans. So that way we'd be able to have a really cohesive environment. Uh, it won't require nearly as much um, uh, view and Nux knowledge for people to be able to build sites for their additions or their projects and whatnot using our tooling because we'll have done a lot of that background work uh, to get things working. So we really hope that this is going to be a great initiative to pull together um, teams across Fedora and to be able to give a really exciting and fun way to refresh the front uh, facing pages and um, allow new contributors to be able to navigate our really vast ecosystem a lot easier. Um, so yeah, once we once we finish our first launch in uh, in spring, we'll be looking to focus on mentorship, team building, and then optimizing and enhancing our components, our component libraries, and our sites and code to make them faster, leaner, smoother, and funner to use. And that's about all I have there. I was thinking that it would be a good plan to uh, pass it over to Emma a bit to talk about uh, the work that's been done on the mockups and designs there, just because that's really what's led to the building of all of this and uh, this tight relationship between the design and development team. So yeah, if you'd like to chat a little bit about what you've been working on. Yeah, of course. Um, are you able to hear me okay, first of all? Yep. Perfect. Okay, yes. so my name is Emma. I am part of the community platform engineering team at Red Hat and I work alongside Mo in the newly founded community design team as well as the Fedora design team. Um, so Mo asked me if I would help out with this project around a year ago and the onboarding process and the collaboration process has been really good. Um, I attend as many of the meetings as I can and I keep up with the chat to keep in the loop of things. Um, in terms of my workflow, so initially I do outreach to addition teams so I interview the respective teams about their edition and what they would like to see on their editions page. Um, I keep them up updated throughout the process so that they can have an input on the designs as well. Um, after that then, I make an initial draft and I share it with the community on discussions, as you can see there for the CoreOS page. Um, I usually notify the team as well about this post so they're able to um, leave some of their comments as well. Um, and then I update any changes that were suggested there. And once everyone seems happy with the design, um, you know, I implement the recommended changes and I mark it as done. Um, yeah, so that one's a bit big there. That's, yeah, but <laughs> still working it out. But um, yeah, so in terms of the CMS integration then, so um, during the process, during this whole like process, the web and apps team kind of build a page with the draft elements that um, I have on Penpot. And since Ashlyn and the team have walked me through how the CMS works, I'm able to go in and update the content then as needed. So if, if I'm making a small change on the hero image or anything like that, it's really simple for me to just go in and change it myself. Um, 
for coding sessions then as well, there was a workshop that Ashlyn ran with um, members of the design team to show how the website was built, as well as practical sessions where we took part in peer coding. So that was good because it was interesting to see then the developer's perspective and how their whole process works then as well. So yeah, it's from the design side, it's been, it's been really good and a very enjoyable project to be part of. Uh, I'll hand it back to Can I ask you about the, uh, you said hero image. I that's jargon to me. I guess that's the like a big image at the front top of the page. Is that the Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, like the featured image at the top. Yeah. And then the content management system, the CMS, that's basically what um someone like who is in the IoT team would use to update uh, like or the desktop team here on that one, the trusted leading the trusted Linux desktop. If they wanted to update those phrases, that's where they would go to do that? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Wanted to make sure that's clear. Yeah, so I can hand it back then to you guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Ashlyn, do you want me to quickly do a walkthrough? Uh, we, we've, we've, I think it, we're probably uh, <clears throat> ready for that at this point. Yeah, yeah, totally jump into it. Great, okay. Um, I'm, I'm also realizing uh, sometimes demos are sensible first. Or, uh, so that everyone knows what we're talking about. Um, but hey everyone, I'm Nico. I've been working on this project for about a year and um, it's been really fun collaborating with everyone. Um, this is our main um, repository and then we've mainly um, collaborated over a chat so far. Um, so this is our GitLab um, repository currently for this specific project. We then refactor certain components out into a separate uh, kind of component library repository, as Ashlyn was saying. Um, this is our, um, th this is kind of what we always try to link to. <clears throat> so, um, you know, issues and merge requests here, but then um, we quickly explain our tech stack. And then our main strategy has been to have these static deploys that are always being updated basically daily um, with each, um, with each uh, you know, merge. Um, so that people can always see what we're, what we're working on. Um, GitLab pages is what I'm going to show you today. That's built on, on GitLab CI itself. Um, and that's the, the most up to date of the develop branch. But then, um, Francois has already set up a staging website on fedoraproject.org, uh, to confirm that the whole build system works there also. Just to, to kind of anchor you, uh, this is our, uh, same, um, this is our same uh, workstation page that we've been showing off. Um, so I'm going to quickly walk you through the Fedora um, kind of test deploy and then also the CMS deploy, which is critical to this because as Emma and um, Ashlyn were implying, um, this is the first time that uh, you'll be able to, or one of the first times that you'll be able to uh, edit the content yourself um, as, uh, you know, without getting into HTML. So um, let me interrupt again, sorry. Uh, if people please. go to stage.fedoraproject.org, stg.fedoraproject.org, you could, I, I just pulled it up over here, and I can yes. see the live live website. Is that actually updated daily as well? or? Is that uh, that's updated weekly. So how we've done right. it is we're, we're pretty um, kind of, we're pretty, I want to say trigger happy, tr trigger happy with the merge requests to develop, um, and then test things out there on our GitLab pages. And then once things have stabilized somewhat, once a week we deploy to stage.fedoraproject.org. Um, what happens when main, the main branch actually gets deployed to fedoraproject.org if, if all goes smoothly at F38, I'm not sure. Maybe this becomes the main branch, fedoraproject.org, and then staging would either stay in lab pages or the staging.fedoraproject.org. We, we can kind of mix and match as we yeah. like. Okay, so someone who's interest, casually interested in seeing what it looks like at this point, that's a good place for them to look. And then if you're interested in getting yes. more involved, more up to date on what's actually changing minute to minute, going to the website's um, section yes. on uh, the Fedora GitLab is where to go. Totally. Great point. Because GitLab pages, we try not to, Fedora GitLab, we try not to break, but sometimes it breaks just because we're, you know, trying new translation stuff or whatever. Um, yes, I think staging stage.fedoraproject.org is a good one to share because that's kind of confirmed non-broken always. Great. Okay, I'm moving on here. Uh, well, let's do a quick click through finally of, our, of, <laughs> of the website uh, that we've all been working on. So this is a statically rendered, there's no backend to this website. Um, uh, 
website um, based on Knox, as, as uh, Ashlyn was saying, which has helped us componentize all these things so that we're not duplicating each other's efforts. So as an example, Jefferson um, built, uh, you know, let's say the, the, the kind of the cloud page uh, recently, um, one, one of our contributors, and he could reuse all of you know the titles and designs from the main workstation landing page. Um, we worked hard to get uh, mobile responsiveness. So Ashlyn and, and everyone was thinking hard about how these things respond um, mo uh, mobile from the, from the very uh, beginning um, and how that experience scales down. Um, and we've also been thinking, um, well, we've also been thinking about internationalization from, from the beginning. Um, uh, Francois has uh, done a lot of work on that. So this is fully translatable, uh, as you can see here. Um, we're not sure about the, the placement of this actual language switcher yet, but that will get there at some point. Um, and we also support dark mode now, which is a <laughs> much requested feature for all the late workers here. Um, so I'll leave it just on the default light and um, and uh, sorry, uh, default light mode and um, uh, not and, and English for, for the for the time being. But you can basically mix and match this as you see fit um, for your own personal experience. Um, cool. We I know one of the main design goals of Ashlyn and and especially Mo and and the design team as they were originally doing this was to um, put more weight on community and that it is a community. So uh, each um, kind of each edition page here um, has uh, of our five main editions has a download and community edition. Um, and then we've also really tried to, or Ashton was re really trying to get all the editions like on that discussion thread up in our nav bar for I think the first time. So as an example here, we have a, a currently editions Emerging editions, um, bins, and labs. They're all here, along with stressing things like the community and all the things the community does, uh, how to contribute, and all the things on how to contribute, and how to get support. And, so and that looks really nicely flexible for if we want to change around some of the things with what we call spins and labs and that sort of stuff. It gives us completely a way to yeah. present that a lot differently, which. Certainly, this can scale up. I think Ashlyn fought tooth and nail to to uh, to get this nice and scalable. So thank you for your efforts there, Ashlyn uh, and and Mo. Um, and yeah, and this although it's a relatively complex um, uh, nav bar, there, there's a lot of precedent for this on the internet. Be it even just uh, our downstream projects like um, uh, Red Hat, or then also um, you know IBM.com uh, use use similar kind of uh, switches when they have a lot of products like we do um, and yeah but, but all of this is basically a work in progress still um, yeah cool so let's say you arrive at the uh, index page which would just be the the straight um, you know the, the root uh, domain name um, this then this is still work in progress you'll basically see a list as you do now uh, of, of the different um, OS's that we offer and then this download is going to switch into a get Fedora soon because we don't we don't like how downloads appears twice on certain pages. Um, so you'll hit get Fedora and let's say switch. You're looking for the I don't know the IoT version. Um, then you'll be able to to see the benefits here and edit them in the CMS. And then let me just switch to Workstation again because it's most built out for download. If you hit download now, um, this will link to the download page where we have all our additions. Um, and the nice thing about using Nuxt here is certain pages like CoreOS, uh, certain editions like CoreOS actually pull their download links on the front end, like in JavaScript, um, because they're, it, they're regenerated so frequently. Um, and so it actually really helps us doing this in Nuxt as opposed to something truly like, you know, traditionally static, like let's say Jekyll or Hugo, um, because we have kind of a framework on how to build some front end heavy um, uh, interactions into the into the UI without it getting chaotic. Um, so I think future maintainers will will thank uh, everyone's decision here for picking Nuxt. Um, I, I'm about to wrap this up on the demo, but um, last thing I want to say is yeah. So we community stressed more. That was part of the main design goal. Um, so so you know each page has uh, a thing explaining how to 
contribute. What happens for editions? The initial idea was for F38 to switch the five main editions and certain other pages, like let's say Flock, we have built out under events, um, thanks to Francois. Um, uh, but not every single page yet on, on all the various subdomains. So as an example, <clears throat> you know, Silver Blue, we're in collaboration with them already, um, but we'd still just link to their external page for now um, for this for this initial release and then migrate more of the pages once we've kind of ensured that this initial um, release goes well. Uh, we'd migrate more of the pages, let's say spins, labs or whatever, to this new format if we want, or we can leave them on a subdomain. So long story short, we, we don't have to have everything on this. We can link out to external site. Um, and uh, I, that, that kind of concludes my main overview of this. Let me know if you want to see any more um, sub um, kind of menus here uh, or, or sub pages. That's the GitLab pages I just demoed. Stage.fedoraproject.org looks similar. Um, but then our, one of the main pushes here was despite this being statically rendered content, we, we, would, we did want a CMS um, at, to, to, let's say, if someone hates how it says, you know, browse a great collection of uh, apps, we'd want to say browse an open source collection of apps. Um, how, would a, how would you do this without editing HTML? Well, you basically click on this CMS deploy link here. We can obviously link to this better. And this links to our same uh, GitLab pages here, but with a slash admin at the end. And this, if you have access to the uh, to a, a certain permission on the GitLab um, repository, will log you in to this front end uh, called Netlify CMS, which can edit, which can commit to Git. So it's all a Git-based workflow, but it masks this all in a in a relatively user-friendly um, manner. So it's not complete. What you see is what you get. But it's it's about as close as we can get without having a fully hosted, you know, WordPress instance. So let's say I'm I'm looking to um, edit the uh, that that um, I think it was uh, fantastic apps under features for everyone. Uh, I open up the features for everyone card and I can simply here edit this into uh, a great browser and an open source collection of apps, and it works the same for images, it works the same for pretty much everything else. And you know, here I will get a quick uh, kind of preview of, of this um, uh, string, but um, once I hit uh, save, um, it will actually open a quick um, merge request on, on our GitLab page, um, but, the, but then we'll see this as a draft in here. But let's say this is ready and I wanna publish it. Um, we can publish it right now, and the this is meant mainly for you know fixing benefits. And you'll do this maybe once every two months. I'm, I'm thinking changing the actual text on the website. Um, that then gets merged into our um, into our develop repository, and the CI rebuilds the uh, static site as you can see right here. Um, and then that will um, appear, that change will appear on this test deploy in, in kind of roughly 50, 50 seconds a minute um, right there. So that's kind of our main, um, you know, create and, and uh, an edit uh, flow. You can't completely create new pages from scratch. So if there is a new edition, you will need to, um, you, you will need to have kind of an engineer or a contributor um, build you a new one here with existing components and just add it into, you know, pages. Um, but uh, for, for editing strings, which from our kind of uh, thoughts was one of the main use cases uh, and replacing images, you'll be able to do all of that in this CMS uh, deploy, um, which is open source and hosted on our own infrastructure. Um, and that way we get the benefits of a serverless, um, you know, static site with the, some of the benefits of a CMS. And that concludes- That's really cool. My overview, yeah. Um, let's say I'm somebody who works on you know, a, a spin that I have only some amount of spare time to work on and most of that goes into improving the spin. And then it's like, 
two days before release day and I realize I want to change something and I don't remember where to find the CMS. Um, how how will I find, can I find it from the page or do I need to know to go somewhere to find the CMS? Great, great question. Yeah, well, 100% we can link to basically slash admin at the end of this under, let's say, contributors, you know, yeah, wherever we want, basically. Uh, there, there could be a link here, um, let's say the CMS of this site, and that would simply add slash admin to the end of this. And, uh, well, uh, not not with slash workstation, L sorry. Live demo. Yeah, yeah, live demo. But you see, we get to the CMS if we just basically add slash Okay. Yeah. Great. Point. What do you think about actually having a um, e edit this page link on the pa on the pages themselves? We do for the docs. Well, and anyone feel free to jump in here, but uh, I will say that you do need um, permission to uh, edit um, or make merge requests on this um, repository to log in to the ad, to the admin dashboard. Um, so that may be a little confusing if people understand it as a true wiki where you can you know, create an account okay. right there. Um, that, that wouldn't be as straightforward here, which I think probably makes sense for such a high profile project uh, because you know vandalism, as we know, is a thing for um, wikis. Yeah, that's just an, uh, <coughs> excuse me, an idle thought there. Yeah, for sure. But that makes sense. But I'm open to it, yeah. Uh, Depends what everyone else thinks. <laughs> I guess I'm thinking at this point maybe a link somewhere in there to just a document explaining what to do. Yeah, hundred percent. That could be an edit right here. Because I'm definitely thinking people will forget where to go when they're not in it all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea to add for our documentation and just how we we make sure to have good tool tips for contributing and getting involved with with the websites and that's that's very much like our next uh, phase kind of plan so we'll 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 chat about that one in the future that's a great idea matthew this is just uh really amazing <clears throat> so amazing i'm losing my voice apparently right yeah. today um yeah i'm i'm really excited to see this and actually more than that, I'm just excited to see this team and everybody working on this, and Ashlyn and Akash and Emma, Nico, everybody. Uh, uh, this has been you know, a, a few years ago. We were at a point where uh, the website, like we, there was a release coming out, and we actually didn't know who owned updating the website. Like <laughs> the release, we actually had a release where the release came out and we had to scramble. Oh no, somebody actually update the website to show that we've been released. Nobody owned that. Um, and it was really in a bad, bad shape. And it's just been amazing to see all of you come together and build an amazing team that has made this really great website that's going to be so nice for the project. I'm, I don't know. Uh, so impressed, proud, I don't know, happy, it's amazing. Thank you, that's everybody. A very, that's a very rare moment we see Matthew speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I do like to talk. Of course. Uh, yeah, this is... Uh, yeah, is there anything else to show off here, or...? No, sorry, I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, the, I think our main, what, what we're looking for today is get thoughts um, from the council and, and sorry, Ashlyn, I'm paraphrasing here, um, but uh, get thoughts from the council and basically get, you know, an initial um, kind of tentative go ahead for, um, yeah, this this direction and, and, and a rough, uh, and, and also our rough timeline of F38 um, using the, the index page and the main five editions and the download pages for F38 um, moving to this new format. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> wow. I so bad. Um, I I think it's great. I think if you can hit that timeline, let's let's do it. I don't think we need. I guess it's a big change to the main um, the main view of Fedora, so it's good to run it by the council. I don't think we need a full council vote for this, um, but um, yeah, uh, I think 
if anybody on the council has concerns, they should say so in the next couple of weeks. Um, if if they don't, let's consider it. Go ahead for F thirty eight. And I, I really like also the um, piecemeal approach there, uh, where you, we can do parts of it as we go. So that means we can do it in a less than ambitious way if some parts work and some don't. Um, I see some blue jeans uh, video comments here coming from people. Um, they're going too fast for me to read on my screen here, but also they won't get into the video call. So if people have things to say, feel free. I'm going to put this into gallery view here. Um, I can vocalize my my comment yeah. here that I put in chat. Um, I was just curious, like, I also just to echo off Matthew, like, this is really awesome. And just kind of seeing the evolution of our website's strategy and approach has been really cool. I was just wondering, and I this could be obvious, like, maybe I just missed it. But has there been already been any community blog posts about any of this work or updates on like, yes. hey, we're doing this new thing? Yes, it has been said multiple times in Comblog. We even made votes. We even mentioned it. We made workshops. We basically show off a lot of places. So it has been very well should be known. I mean, we did what we could a, a lot of times. Awesome. Awesome. And also Might discuss be a good thing then. as well. Hmm. Might be a good thing then, especially now that we have a official Mastodon presence there and we are pulling in some new folks who I think are engaging with us now there. Um, if we have a recent post that has maybe some of the kind of the demo or something close like to a preview that we saw here, might be nice to share that with the marketing team yeah. as something to highlight. I know they're always looking for new content and things to highlight and promote happening in the community. And we we'll promote this video too. When, once this video, the recording goes live. Uh, yeah, the, and the, like the past, uh, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Nico. The the past month or two, we've been really getting into a lot with um, just some of the, the weeds of setting this up, like with Francois getting the uh, the deploy going to get a Fedora project dot org, getting our translate working on our translation pipeline, the nav. The, yeah, the past month or so has been a pretty big deal on our end. Uh, so I know we were quite vocal around Nest and before and after Nest with our, our updates. I don't think we've written anything too much since then, but now that we're coming through to this point of usability, I think, yeah, it might be a good time to uh, to, to publish something again. Uh, I agree. Plus, we kind of a little bit dormant is because, uh, as if I'm wrong, please correct me, we decided to uh, the team, most of the, I mean, Ashley and Nico uh, and others, and uh, Francois mostly, uh, and I was in the meeting, I remember we, we, we said that I think we need to finish more and show more finished product first than we show it, uh, let's just say, uh, we trust this one now, we should ready to show it. That kind of moment we're also waiting for as well. So maybe as Ashton mentioned, it's a good time to do another tour and give the marketing team some uh, tools to, and you know, um, content to play with it. So it will be awesome. And congrats everybody as well. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I think we can go ahead and and test it on on way more people. Just to go off what the, everyone else said. Um, now, I think we were mainly trying to a not jump the gun and say, hey, this is our new website for F thirty eight before the council had at least had a moment to yell nay, uh, and also that this new nav bar that kind of pulls everything Fedora together um, didn't land until a couple of weeks ago, and we were we didn't want back on the old nav bar. So that's one of the reasons we weren't sharing it. Um, but yeah, now I think we're ready to, to get as much feedback as we can. That sounds great. Uh, Tumantro, you had a comment there in the... Tumantro so just left it for some reason. Oh, He's not okay. here. Right. Uh, yeah, if just from the comments, uh, Justin said, um, some some uh, feedback on on our progress since uh, Nest. Um, Ashlyn, do you want to speak to that? Or maybe I can. Like that was just a we're kind of reply there. I think um, since yeah, from the time around then might be helpful depending on how much feedback you're looking to take at this point versus like keeping a, a regular pace. Because I know managing feedback is also something that takes time and can slow down development a bit, but. Um, I just think, you know, reaching out to Joseph in the marketing team or any of the folks there in the matrix room 
I was just looking at this and I was like, wow, this is amazing. We should let more people know that like we have some exciting stuff coming down the pipeline for Fedora 38. So I was just clarifying that um yeah, depending what's useful for your team or for the for the team doing the work, that might be helpful to get a little more like wider look at some of the work that you've been doing since Nest. Over. Definitely. We should we should chat about that in our, our upcoming meetings and just how we want to approach that. I think we all, because we've been working so hard on this, when we, we release and go to, to launch, we really want to have kind of a, a boom wow factor, too. So there's a little bit of, like, not wanting to over-inundate people with it as we're, as we're still doing it. So it doesn't feel like an old hat by the time it gets there. I, I think there's going to be some boom wow. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> Plus one. Just to echo, I don't know if, Steve, you want to come on mic and ask your question, or you'd rather have one of us rep it for you here. Um, but just a question from, from Steve Daly here about who he should reach out to about getting the Fedora server page updated. He's here representing the, the server working. Yeah, I just write it an answer. Uh, most of us, uh, Nico, Ashlyn, Francois, Akash, me, and basically come to the website chat. We can help you through the GitLab and links and walk it through in, in our regular meeting. You can join us and we can basically show you what to do and give you a help hand and you can update your uh, pages. Uh, thank you, Akash, for the link. And basically that's the place. Uh, the best place is definitely metrics soon because the, for, uh, for reasons, it's our most communication places. So that's um, um, the website's channel on chat yes. or uh, mm -hmm. uh, websites that websites that I don't remember the matrix address. You can website website uh, double quote fedoraproject.org uh, is the matrix channel. Yes. And on the server um, page specifically, um, the reason that's a little less built out than the other editions is because we were still waiting for um, kind of designs basically from the design team so they they uh, owe us that um but we can also port the existing get fedora page just to, to the new you know kind of flashier uh, format for now and and leave the existing content uh, and then update it to the new designs as we get them C come into the chat and we can discuss uh, also you can help us on the new content maybe server page is old maybe there's a new tools comes up for example i'm just saying out of top of my head let's just say uh in the server page that doesn't have cockpit but now the current cockpit is much more better maybe we can maybe you are you guys want to showcase it maybe something else so this kind of content help and other stuff also help us because uh it's basically what you want to future is also important as well in the website in also respective other teams as well. Uh, so that will be also help us uh, a lot because I know a lot of content is there slightly, some others a bit more older. So some refreshments will be an amazing as well. Right, so um, a quick kudos to Maureen Duffy for creating all the designs, leading the design side of things, and of course coming up with the logo for our team that you can always pay a visit to our matrix channel to take a look at. And nice. um, coming to the point where, uh, you know, to make sure that these websites and the contributions to them stay fresh, Ashlyn has had a very good framework around the mentorship side of things that she has laid down. She has been in touch with me as well as with Justin regarding the same and um, websites being one of those things that is taught predominantly in schools, in universities, as well as in art schools as well. So we can employ a lot of people, right, to make these things happen, to have maintainers for the long term. Um, so it would not just be us, but we see a lot of folks coming around and staying back, hopefully, for contribution. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, and yes, uh, thank you very much to Mo for all the work on this. I'm, uh, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I'm thanking the people I can see, but um, it, Mo's not here today. But uh, did a lot of amazing design work and design thinking uh, going into this, uh, which is awesome and very appreciated. Um, we've got a uh, few there, more minutes. Oh, sorry, go ahead. There is a message also. Uh, Steve said they actually discussed about refreshing the content server page in their last meeting. 
So they have a task group that's amazing. So they will, they really want to change their page content, basically what they say. That's also important. That's amazing. Uh, it's going to be, an, uh, it's going to be awesome. Server's also important. I use it as well. <laughs> so cool. uh, yes, man. Maybe, maybe actually, so I'm uh, sorry, I'm talking about Mo here, but Emma, um, maybe you could um, talk to them about their kind of their, their, their benefits and, and, uh, and, and then forward that on to the design team to draw up some benefits. Basically, we can go rogue and um, just build stuff, but uh, you know, <laughs> it's often better to get the design set first, to reduce iterations. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. They're next on the list anyway. So. Thanks so much. Perfect. Cool. Um, we we focused on uh, on this new website thing a lot. Um, we've got a few more minutes left. It's just a websites and apps team. Um, would someone like to talk a little bit more about like um a uh, other other websites and and apps. What does the apps part of this team mean, and what um, what kind of things are worked on around that? I think I can. So um, one of the first applications that we revamped was Moat. The next one was this, but this one was a huge composite project of a lot of sites. Like it literally is a framework of its own. I wouldn't call Moat it a is the uh, meet, meeting log system we have, by the way. So meeting log if you, if you, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Fedora has a lot of text meetings, like I said. So this is where all those text-based meetings are logged there. I don't know why it's called Moat, but it, if it is, so that was yeah, that right. was updated. There's actually right. a good meaning behind it. <laughs> I don't oh. remember, but there was a good meaning behind it. You should check okay. it out. I don't remember, uh, it, but it was a good meaning behind it. Let's see if I can right. figure that out. Uh, so do you want to continue, Akash? Good thing. So circling back to the development part of the website, it was a huge composite project and. A uh, big kudos to everyone who was a part of it and made this thing happen. This right here will lay foundation to all the components that we'll be making use of in our applications as well as in the sites down the line. So the view implementation with the websites and apps team has been a good factor which has influenced the CTE team, the community platform engineering team of Red Hat to use Vue.js in their projects as well. And uh, we would like to make use of more of these progressive frameworks. So what comes next? Fedora badges. These components that uh, we will be API. making, as well as fast API, the backend side of things. But yeah, these components that have been created as a part of this project would be used in the Fedora badges revamp, which will be coming down the line. So do stay posted. This will be a big project, just like the one that we have had right now. And we'll keep all our fingers and toes cross to make sure that it also becomes a success. That's great. What about FedoCal? I look at FedoCal and I think, oh, this is uh, this was great when it was brand new. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's... It's, it's it's still functional. So I I, I think we can <laughs> we can we can still keep with. I, I like how is it work right now? <laughs> can we just fix the badge first, please? At least uh, well, oh, yeah. I I love my I want my badges back. <laughs> One thing at a time. Okay, fair enough. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on on that one there with with FedoCal because there's uh, some functionality that we've been planning on a few of our sites, particularly the Flock site, that that's going to have some live updating calendars and whatnot. So getting into FedoCal, like after, I think badges is a really good next step because we can really hone and perfect our front end and sharpen our tools there. So that stuff works really smooth, really clean. And then when we start to get more onto the API side of things with rebuilding FedoCal, um, we'll be able to have a really tight integration between it and our front end. So we'll be able to have uh, just more options for where we show date and time information and stuff like that. So I think that's gonna be really cool. Cool, I'm glad that's on, on the radar. Uh, yeah, uh, again, I'm oh, sorry. Matthew, please go first. Oh, I was just going to conclude things. So if you have something that's not a conclusion, you should say it. Uh, okay. So uh, I just want to say um, at least a little bit of a, uh, it's a little bit for you. Uh, I hope that can happen. I was just thinking. Uh, so maybe in the badges and systems, uh, you, you like graphics. So I might be come with you some idea about graphics in, in, in behind of the badges. So you like graphics, I know that. And I have a, I have a really creative idea for you. And I actually prepared something. <laughs> for okay, later. can't can't wait. Um, awesome. Yeah, uh, does anybody else have any final thoughts, questions? 
Yeah, j just uh, one one quick one is just I think it was smart. Um, so this happened before I, I joined the project, but the, you and Noxt were picked um, to build this new website, and um, I, I've been I was thinking I, we've all been thinking a lot about this kind of tech stack, and I just think this could uh, carry Fedora into the future for the next you know ten years, as opposed to I know there have been a lot of website revamps in the past. The nice thing about this Noxt and View thing um, now is you can scale all the way over into apps because it's a very reactive, uh, you know, uh, interaction heavy framework. And then what we're doing here for the static pages, because we don't want to be shipping a web app as our landing page, is we cook it down into very straight, simple HTML. That's what Nox does for us. Um, so that uh, we're, we're both using a language that a lot of people know how to write in. They use basically fancy HTML at the end of the day. Um, and then, um, it can also scale all the way up to apps, but it's not doing so on our website right now. Uh, yeah, just wanted to kind of connect those dots. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, thinking ahead to a long future is nice for Fedora. <laughs> right, piggybacking on Nico's point, sure, uh, Vue.js as well as Linux, the combination of both of these, one for the applications, one for the sites, while these making the use of same components, will lead us to future, but uh, the one more thing that we have been emphasizing more on is documentation. Just to make sure that if we don't have people around, we still would be able to have something that people can reach out to, refer, and be able to create something by themselves would be of great help. So uh, we have been having efforts to it, and it's not just bound to just the development side of things or deploying things, but rather it can be down to how to run meetings, stuff like that and uh, how to mentor people when you are, well, have spent some time within the team and know wh what the ins and outs are. So um, documentation has been our big focus and will continue to be as we go on for a considerable point of time. And uh, well, we just make it a point that anything that has to happen, it needs to be documented because there will be time when we are not around and we need to make sure that people are still able to do things and not just will come up with another rewrite because <laughs> right um it's not a very uh well it's an intensive thing it's not good when it happens often yeah okay well thank you again everybody this looks amazing thank you for sharing it um I, i'm excited um Meanwhile, in Fedora land, uh, we are talking about Fedora, uh, we just talked about uh, this framework for the next 10 years. We're not quite that ambitious, but we're talking about the Fedora strategy, overall project strategy for the next five years, how we're going to advance the project, both technically and in you know, our community and social structures. Um, There's on discussion at fedoraproject.org under the council tag, you'll find uh, that conversation. Please Everybody here, please join us um, and everybody watching it. This is to be a community discussion. That's going to be pretty uh, intense, I think, for the next three months. And we kind of get that all set up and going this year. So please join in on that. Um, and then this is the part of the call where I ask Ben what, what the next video meeting is. And he says, I'm ready for your question this time, Matthew. I'm ready for your question this time, Matthew. Nice, we will not nice. have a video meeting in February because the council will be getting together for a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, so in March, uh, Akash will be back uh, we'll be talking about a related but separate topic, the Web and Apps Community Survey results. That will okay. be March 8th at the uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Look forward to seeing Akash and everybody else then. Uh, thank you all. and. Yeah, I just can't keep saying it. This is so amazing.